You know, the incredible part about that game, though, is, well, Palace actually didn't play that badly. Palace did OK. They tried to have a bit of a go. They weren't just sort of sat on the edge of their own box, not uh, afraid to have a go at Liverpool. They, they did, but they were just completely blown away. Well, that, what, 3-0 down at half-time, I think they were. And they could, honestly, it could have been 3-3. They had, they had some really good chances, in the, which they didn't take. They weren't clinical. And, and we've seen Liverpool, I think, in terms of goals conceded, that, you know, in the top 10, I think they've conceded the most. Right. So defensively, they're not absolutely at their best no. but because they're scoring so much and if they're going to do that they're going to get seven and start keeping clean sheets then I think we're in for a big worry look at that that number eight the second, yeah, that's amazing, second. Isn't it? I mean that's incredible to score seven with eight on target <laughs> I think that's we can class that as pretty ruthless can't we well to be fair even Mo Salah he came off the bench and he was ruthless so yeah, um, yeah. when they play like that then, you know, there's no stopping them. Now, against Aston Villa, we know what happened earlier this season. They conceded seven. They got humbled at, at, at Villa Park. And we were all, all a little bit concerned for Roberto Firmino at this point because he was out of sorts. He seemed to look like his body language wasn't great. He was getting muscled off the ball in situations like that. And, and, and everything was kind of, everything that he was trying to do was going wrong, as it did for Liverpool on the day roll on a couple of months and we are now seeing the player that I know you love I mean I know you love this guy and I certainly am a huge fan of his too yeah I think everybody loves him I think Liverpool fans I think Liverpool players Jurgen Klopp especially you know all that talk when Jota was flying that he was dropped Firmino but the thing is with Salah and Mane they tend to look out for their goals don't they and they're yep. and 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 Bobby Firmino is, is the type of he doesn't think about him himself, does he? He's the no. most selfless player and he, he drops off, he makes space for the other players. And this was him at his best. His touches, you know, that's that's what that's why they signed him. Yeah. Because he presses the ball better than any centre forward probably in Europe. And that's what he gives you all the time. But then his link up play, his unselfishness, you know, his awareness of where to be, where his teammates are. Yeah. You know, he times his run, gets him behind Kuata there. He just he just has the total package. He might not get you the numbers of a Harry Kane, but I think depending on what you have around, when you've got Mane and Salah, Bobby Firmino, look at that football. Brilliant. Yeah, fantastic pass. And again, when, when he's right, Owen, when he's operating at his, uh, at his very best, he makes the game look scarily easy, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, this is, I mean, that's what he's that great touch. at. That look touch, at yeah. that. That's, that's a Brazilian touch there. That is. And uh, this one I love. That's Bobby there, that one. Outside of the foot and then sprays it wide with the outside foot. That's him. That's, yeah. that's what he wants to do. And then, he, and then he's, you know, busting himself to try and get in the box there. Oh, I just love this. I've got to slow this down a bit and I've got to take that back because I want everyone to watch this. How to touch a ball when it's coming at you pretty quick. Oh, my goodness. And then... Only the outside of the boot as well to finish that. Let's have a look at that once more. That is so good. That whole clip is brilliant. The way that he starts, he starts that and then he's sprinting to get into the box. You can see him there. He's desperate to try and get there. He's not as quick as obviously as the other flyers around him. But I'll let it go in full normal speed. How good's that? I mean, that Clinical. is just... I mean, he loves that. He loves that outside of the foot one and then he gives it the eyes. But... You know, this is just his link-up play, his understanding there. Oh, little flick. Thank you very much. Yeah. He's just, he's a, he is, honestly, he's a joy to watch. I love this one. I mean, this was, I think this was Palace's set piece. How about this for a ding? To dink it with your left foot with a bit of check and spin. Watch it from this angle, Andy. Over the keeper, it spins, and then almost with a right to left. I mean, <laughs> honestly, you can't do that with your weaker foot. No. Yeah. And, and you know, when Diogo Jota arrived... And the way he was playing at the start of the season, there were, there were those that were maybe starting to think is, is not, not so much as Roberto Firmino's time up at Liverpool, because the coach always, has always admired him and loved him, but he was under pressure, Owen. He was really under pressure, wasn't he? Well, he was probably under pressure from the outside world. He wouldn't have been under pressure from Klopp right. and from, you know, from his teammates, because I think if you look at his numbers historically since he's come to Liverpool, he gets you virtually 15 and 10 a season, 15 right. goals, 10 assists. He's on, he's on pace for that. So he's not going to get you 25, 30 like Harry Kane or Sergio Aguero, but he offers so much more. And if your team's winning the Premier League, winning the Champions League, and Salah's winning the Golden Boot or Mane's winning the Golden Boot, it tells you that the balance of the team is good. And one of the big reasons why is because of Bobby Firmino. Yeah, indeed. Let's get up to Leroy. Leroy, I know you're an admirer of uh, Roberto Firmino as well. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't believe that people had to defend him at the start of the season, Andy, uh, in all honesty. I know Yotta Yotta's coming and done uh, wonderfully well in, in the red of Liverpool, but Bobby Firmino is a different sort of player and a really important sort of player. But it's funny, when things are going well for you, Andy, uh, everything seems to, to go for you. And I, I just just made me giggle at this clip at, at the weekend. You just uh, Firmino, just going to play it through here. I'm just going to highlight him. Just uh, your number nine in that position there. And I'll just play play this through because when things aren't going for you, you know, nothing seems to go right. But even now, Bob Firmino miscontrols it and bang. What a great pass that is. <laughs> That's just a great pass. It still comes off. It's amazing football, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is great. I love that. That is so typical, isn't it? That is of what happens when, when all of a sudden you, you weather a bit of a storm, you get a few goals, and especially for a striker, Leroy, as well. You know, that's typical of you jammy strikers. You know, everything works for you when you're having a bad time and you start knocking a few in the net. Uh, absolutely, Andy. But you know what? I don't think Bobby Firmino should be judged by his goals. I know he scored a couple of goals this weekend, but there's more, much, much more to him. You saw that silky touch. You saw the use of the outside of the foot. You saw him clipping one over the goalkeeper uh, with his weaker foot. But it's the other stuff. That's yeah. why he's in the side. And that's why I think he's just an absolutely incredibly incredible footballer. Yeah, I agree. We agree. And, and he's the sort of player to me, Owen, as well. I think he could go and play, not the Liverpool fans will thank me for it. He can go and play at Real Madrid. He can go and play at Barcelona. He could go and play for any team anywhere in the world, I think, and go straight in to their starting eleven. Do you? Well, I think that, that yeah, because I think he doesn't upset the balance. If, if you get too many selfish, not selfish ones, but guys that want to score, you know, you think about Salah, Mane, if you get one more that, is of that ilk I think it, it I don't think it works I think Bobby works because he doesn't he doesn't look for himself you know he does what's best for the for his teammates he makes space for them and I agree he walks into every team yeah I agree Takumi Minamino would be delighted that he got a bit of game time Owen and also got himself a, a handy goal at the weekend yeah, he's a good player. I think he's still trying to find his feet and find his role. The thing is, we've been saying about him, when you play in this Liverpool team, you've got to get numbers. And to get numbers, you've got to get in the box there. So there's plenty of space. Mane played off the right, and uh, Minamino did really well coming inside off the left-hand side. Brilliant goal. But great yeah. touch, a little dink over the top, and a lovely finish. This one there is such a smart run from just takes the defender away there yep. and then allows Bobby to get that little dink over the top. He is a really good player. He presses the ball really well. He, he takes the ball on the half turn really well. Again, another run there. Great touch. He's, he's, he's getting his opportunity because Jota's out. And I think he's a really good player in terms of... He can play midfield in the midfield three. He can play almost as a, as a false line. He can play wide. When he plays wide, he needs to make those runs that you see Mane make coming from the left, coming inside as he did in that game. Salah does it on the other side. He stays wise and he comes inside. I think Liverpool have a really good player there. What, seven million he costs. Yep. You know, I think he's, um, he's a how good long, one. How long, Owen, can you keep a player like that kind of happy? It's different. I know the era's totally different to my era. If you, did, if you wasn't playing in my era 20 years ago, you would be going crazy after a couple of weeks of not playing. You'd be banging on the door wanting to know why. How long can you keep someone like Minamino happy enough to just be sitting there watching more often than not well with the utmost respect to him he's a squad player he knows that he's not better than any of the front three and he's not better than any of the midfield three so he's going to step in and play when other people are out or when Salah gets rested like he did and it's great to have squad players Man United the team that we had that you know was able to win titles and win the Champions League we had a lot of squad players good players that had a big impact Wes Brown Darren Fletcher you know those guys were Jisung Park that's really important. And yeah. Minamino can be that to Liverpool. But he, he's, if he's starting for Liverpool in the front three, I don't think they're competing to win the Premier League. No. But if he plays 20 games and plays a role, then I think he's perfect. Yeah, I think no, very good. Very good too. Let's get up to Leroy. Leroy, as ever, we love the dynamic between Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. Mm. I know they're teammates, but they also look like they, they got, let me put it this way, a very healthy rivalry going on between the two. We saw a bit of that again at the weekend. We certainly did, Andy. And do you know what? Lots of people read this in, in different ways. I'm going to play it through for you. And for me, I, I, I absolutely loved his reaction. He is fuming. Absolutely, I wouldn't want to be uh, next to him at this moment in time. He is steaming. He is so angry. And his team are winning the game and he's being taken off. Now, for me, if we're winning the game. I'd come off, yeah, high fives to the guy on the bench. And, yeah, oh, brilliant. I've got my goals. I'd come off from there. Not this guy. Not this guy. He is absolutely steep. He yeah, doesn't even want to come off. Leroy, do you think, though, there he's laboured that a little bit too much? He knew full well his numbers up there. He mm. knows he's going off. 
do you not just turn around and get off? You might not want to shake hands with Klopp or, or the guy that's replacing you, but I think there he's just getting to the point where he's, he's, he's labouring that a little bit too much for me. I, Andy, yeah, I, I think you're right, but I, just, I think that's him. I think that's the way he plays. I don't think there's any off switch. I don't think there's any pull, pulling back the throttle with this guy. And I just think that's naturally him. But I just wonder, I mean, I mean any players that you play with were like this guy, just even when you're winning a game, doesn't want to even be taken off the pitch. Leroy, everybody I played with was like that. <laughs> you, if you don't look like that walking off, mm. you're not a competitor. The reason he made it as far as he did, leaving home and the journey that he's going to become to play for one of the iconic teams is because of that face. That it means the world to him. 60 minutes, he got taken off. He looked over and thought, he's bringing Mo Salah on when there's like four goals left where I, c- I could be involved in. No disrespect to Mo Salah, but he sat here to sit on the bench to start the game. Yeah. So he was upset. And then Mane was upset that he had to go off. And that's the thing, being the manager. You know, you have... To, it's, it, it's difficult because these boys all have strong opinions of themselves. Yeah. And it's difficult to balance that. But look, he's... He's, he's a great coach and he's got some world-class talent, but you should be annoyed if right. you get subbed. What does Jurgen Klopp do, Leroy, for you in a situation with, with these two? Because if you, you wouldn't want it going to the next stage, would you? Because the next stage, to me, would be where you've got players that don't seem to want to play with each other. That's the worry. Now, listen, there's no evidence of that whatsoever with these two at the moment, but you don't want to let that develop too far, do you? Well, that's, that's why you've got players like, um, Jordan Henderson and James Milner in that dressing room, Andy, as you know, they, they, they govern that dressing room and they wouldn't let it get out of hand. They let it simmer. They let it come to a certain point. And when it, if it was to, uh, like boil over a little bit, they would be the ones who defuse it. That's why those players are worth their weight in gold. Uh, because Jurgen Klopp knows he can trust the dressing room and everything that happens within that dressing room. Yeah. I believe, have you got a question for me, Leroy, or not? Yes, I have. Uh, and uh, I've just lost it. It's here. It's uh, uh, on Twitter. And it's a good one. It's from uh, B Analyst. And uh, He could get a job here if he's I, any good. I'll tell you what, it's not bad. There he is. <laughs> he says, uh, he, he says when, when a Liverpool player is angry, it's passion. But a United player, he isn't happy with the style of play. The club isn't run properly. Don't you think Mane is just tired and maybe wants to go to Spain? Oh, wow. Tell you what. Mm. What was the name? B Analyst. B Analyst. That's a lot of analysing well, there, isn't there? Hey, that's a good... <laughs> no, but that's a very good point. For mm. the champions, yeah, it's, it's, people look upon that as as uh, as the sort of ingredients you need to, to win. And other teams have that sort of ingredient. And it's a crisis in the camp, I mean. Well, no, but I think Jurgen Klopp... One thing that I think about Liverpool, they are, they are the ultimate team. They, are, they seem like they stick together. And I think if you've got... If that becomes too obvious, like you said, where people can pick up on it and and see those you know i think it's okay to be annoyed but don't show it too much to everybody else you know tell the man don't take me off again don't take me off in 60 minutes and do it in private but when everybody else sees it people go oh there might be a rift there between mane and salah yeah but uh look everybody's gonna want you know real madrid barcelona everybody's gonna want salah and mane but the thing is now liverpool is the best team in europe before it was Real Madrid, Barcelona. That's why Cristiano Ronaldo left Man United to go there. They're not anymore. So the best team in Europe right now is Liverpool. So why, why, why would you leave? Here's a question for you. So Leroy just mentioned about, uh, about Jordan Henderson. Um, we just spoke there about Roberto Firmino and how good he is. And I feel he could go and play anywhere. Jordan Henderson is clearly an outstanding leader now and a very important cog in this Liverpool dressing room. Could he go and play in any other Premier League club? Does he walk into any other team out there? Yeah. Do you think he does? Yeah, because people get caught up in playing football like it's fantasy football. It's not. Football, there's, you know, if you think there's 22 players on the pitch, there's one ball. You need guys there that can affect the game without having the ball at their feet. You know, so if you think... The star player's got the ball. You need somebody that worries about everything else, worries about the space, worries about defensively being in the right position, winning second balls. These you know. clips these clips illustrate exactly that. I exactly. Mean, so it's so in a way, these guys walk into every team because it's you know, they're they're unselfish. And Jordan does the things that you know a captain should. Look, reads that perfect. And then you get the pl- the ball to the flare players that can decide the game. But if he needs to, Jordan, he can play that ball. Yeah. You know, he can play that one and behind. Um and I just think he's, I call, I call them glue guys. I think Jordan Henderson is one of them, he glues it all together. This is interesting, Owen. This is watching him just take up a, a position where he can sort of start to get the team moving forward. You can just see him, that arrow's not very good. Let me just try that one again. That arrow from him there. 
Yeah, because... where he's moving into a position where he can kind of receive the ball. Liverpool keep in possession. Well, because they're getting the, the, the wing back. So that, then it's Trent there and then Robertson on the other side. So essentially, it almost becomes like a, a back three. And then they drop a midfielder into that little hole, whether it's Wijnaldum or, or Keita there. So they, they're very flexible. And that's led by Jordan. Jordan can say, look, lads, you know, our, Bastian Schweinsteiger used to do the exact same thing. He used to go from central midfield and he used to love to receive the ball there because there wasn't really much pressure. And the idea, Owen, is to allow the fullbacks to stay as high as they like. Robertson, you can see over the halfway line there. And Jordan Henderson, all he's got to do is that. And that's, that's, they're their number 10s, essentially, aren't they? They the, are. The fullbacks. So they're the ones who get the assist. Jordan knows that. But then they still keep a solar base at the back. So, and that's all led by Jordan, you know, in terms of, you know, when do we do this? And then you get into these positions there. Look what it adds. You know, it's, it's, and these players are the ones that make the decisions on the play. Klopp gives them options, but the players have to implement that. And Jordan, again, he's the one that is dictating these things. Yeah, he's pulling into that right back position, which allows Trent right here to, uh, to hold the width and be in that position where, as you say, that pass is a little short, but he, he makes that his own. But I, think, I think he's got better like that, do you? I mean, that yeah, his, his passing's much improved. Yeah, yeah. it is. I think it somebody is. gave him a Stephen Jarrett DVD or something because he, he hits a lot of those balls <laughs> like Stevie G does now. You know them long ones, I think he hits them great. Stevie used to do a few of these, I oh, as well. I love this. And, you know, he, he, Trent, the, the timing of the, the pass and the weight of it was perfect, which made Jordan's mind up to hit that like a free kick. And the, he was top draw. Do you see, ultimately, it being Jordan Henderson with the trophy above his head? in a few months' time? Yeah, especially if they're giving people seven nils all, all of a sudden. And yeah. I think if they just tidy up the defence a tiny bit, to think they're doing that without Van Dijk is, is remarkable. But yeah, I think it's, it's Liverpool's trophies to lose. Let's get up to Leroy once more. Hashtag PL fans, please. We do want to hear from you. Leroy, what, what's everyone saying? It's really, it's quite a difficult question, this, uh, Owen, for you. Ola Lycan says, against who are Liverpool likely to drop points against in the remaining part of the season. So I don't think it means like closest rivals, but I suppose what sort of style would Liverpool be most affected by? Well, I don't think they'd be dropping any against West Brom and Newcastle with the utmost respect to their fans. Mm. Southampton are one of the hardest teams to play against. They're difficult. They, they really are hard to play against. We saw what Villa, what they did against Arsenal. When they get it right, they're, they're a handful. But look, United play on the counter. You know, that, you know, that could be one. But I think there's probably only really two or three teams in the division. I think City are interesting this season. Defensively, really solid. Not really scoring as much. But when Sergio Aguero gets back, I think they're going to be right there neck and neck with yeah. Liverpool. Do you think, Leroy, do you think they're getting better still? Is there room that Liverpool... Can, it, can they still improve or do you think they are the ultimate Premier League team, the way that they play? I, I, I love the way, you know, when, when they had all these injuries, I, I loved it when they brought the young players and they did so well. You know, Reese Williams was going to go out alone in the championship to, to Middlesbrough apparently. Now he's keeping him and, and it's amazing. You know, Curtis Jones has been terrific in midfield. I love that. I, and I think that's the way it should be. When you're at Liverpool in the academy, look what Trent Alexander-Arnold made his, his debut uh, against Man United. They had a little bit of a, a stinker, but they recognised just how good he was going to be. Look at him now. And just on, on that, Owen, if they've got Man United on the, the 17th of January. Could United get, get a result against Liverpool? Yeah, I think we've already seen United get results against... They're probably at their at the best against the better teams, aren't they? We mm. saw it against City last year, we saw it against PSG. They can get results, but I think this Liverpool team is just... I think they're a bit too consistent right now. And I think United will make it interesting. But I just think Liverpool might have a bit too much. Yeah, we'll see. Leroy, thank you very much for that. We're going to take a short break now. When we